Memory can be a bit frustrating to deal with, so don't worry, this entire tutorial will show you how to deal with memory efficiently, going over some basics, setting up world partition, some tips to help you reduce memory, HLODs, to using the relatively new spatial profiler, so let's not waste any more time. Okay, first things first, there's a few basics we gotta go over. Now the fundamental thing you need to know is that there's kind of two different kinds of memory. There's island memory and there's project memory, which is also called project size. Now, island memory consists of basically everything in your island. So all you're seeing right here could contributes to island memory. So all these trees everywhere, uh, the landscape, the ocean. Now to actually see island memory, you need to launch the session. Now here we are in game. At the top of your screen, you can see your current memory usage. Now, this is if you don't have World Partition on. I'm, now, I'm going to explain World Partition later. These are some island memory basics you need to know. Now, for a little example, if you looked up your screen, it says 7387. So, it's about 7387 memory right now out of 100,000, which is the limit. Now, if I place down this gnome, you're going to see it go up a little bit. So, that's how much it will cost, okay? So, that's about, what, like 200 memory-ish? So, if I place down this gnome, that will cost about... 200 memory but if i were to copy him again and place him down again it didn't cost 200 memory it only cost about three memory why is that so what you really need to know is that unique props cost the most and then any instances or copies of that prop will cost significantly less so if you see all these trees all these trees um they probably cost about 500 to place down originally then all these little copies probably cost about three or five memory same thing goes for devices if you place down the device it'll cost the most the first time you place it down then any copy will put Will, will cost a lot less. The same kind of idea can be also used for project memory. In your EFN, to find project memory, you gotta go to the very top of your viewport, and when you look at that, project size. If I click onto this, you're gonna see a few little, little things. Now up here, you're gonna see something called an upload size and a download size. Now to be able to publish your map, you need to fall into these two criteria. So the download size must be less than 400 megabytes, and the upload size must be less than 2 gigabytes, aka okay, 2048 megabytes. Now project size can count towards everything in your project that would include anything in here which is like anything really so the main one that usually takes up the most are textures and then you can also have materials materials take up a bit all of this will take up a certain amount of project size but it doesn't take up a lot okay don't worry it's basically like basically nothing until you get the, the materials and textures and models that's what that's when it gets pretty pretty complex and, and start getting sizable now if you want to get even more technical another thing you do is go up into tools go down to audit click on statistics and now we can see more in depth on what we have in our level this is just quite a lot so if you wanted to find something that was like you know picking up too much memory if you click on this you'll sort by type count these have the most things in the world or you can do your actor size you can sort by actor size so this is the biggest the most expensive thing we have right now is the, the landscape with uh, you know all those numbers so in conclusion island memory is everything on the island and project memory slash project size is everything that would be in your cotton drawer and then the project in total. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up world partition. Once your world gets big enough, you're going to see this pop up down here called the streaming disabled. Now to fix this, you're going to go up into window and then you want to go down to world settings, not world partition, world settings. Once you click in here, you're going to see an option called enable streaming. And this is going to set up world partitions. So if you click this, you're going to see we're now enabled streaming. Now you're going to, not going to really see any difference, but the way this will work, it divides up your world into grids and each grid has their own localized memory. If I, if I click this little button, you're going to see the grids now. And these are all the grids. And this little like, those, this little white square I'm in is the loading range of me. So if I'm standing here, these trees will be loaded, but those distant trees all the way over there won't be loaded until I fly over and then they'll be loaded. Now you can also change the cell size, which, which is the, the, the squares. And you can also change the loading range, which is this circle around you. Now you can change it to your will. I want to keep it the same because uh, it might break. Now in game, you're going to notice when I fly around, our memory bar will be changing. So it goes to the five and 4,000 and then back down and then up again. But far away out here, it's going to get to the lowest, which is about 1,228. Now, the reason why this is, is because as I said before, the memory is localized. Places where there's like a lot of unique props, like this wall and this gnome, as you can see, it's going to be a bit more higher. That's about 5,000. Now, this works slightly differently where unique props are only unique in their like radius. If you fly out all the way out here, you're going to see that even though our gnome is over there, that's our first unique prop, you're going to see 3,497. If I place on the gnome again, you're going to see that he's, a, he's cost about the same as the original ones. So every single bounding radius of, of like a prop will have its own unique memory. 
if that makes sense. And inside of there, that's when the instances will come in. Uh, the devices will work the exact same as they did beforehand. Devices will not be affected by the memory cell usage and moving around like props would. So it'll be the exact same if you didn't use a uh, world partition. So over here, it will cost you know, the exact same. So props will have their own localized memory, but devices will always contribute to the count no matter where you are. Now you're probably noticing something as I fly around here. See these trees? You can see those trees as that's in the big circle you saw earlier. But as you can see, none of those trees are appearing. If I fly over to them, now they're going to start appearing because I'm flying into that bounding radius because that's how world partition works. It loads everything spatially. Now let's say if you didn't want this and you wanted to see the trees all the way over there in the distance, you can do something about that. To do it, you're going to need to build HLODs. And how do you do that? You go up here in the build and then look at that, build HLODs. If you click on this, uh, you'd be able to build HLODs. HLOD stands for hierarchical level of detail. Now, if you look at this gnome, there's two options here you want to pay attention to at the very bottom, include actor in HLOD and is spatially loaded. Now, include actor in HLOD is very important because when you build your HLODs at the top here, HLODs cost a lot of project size because you're basically making more, more meshes to use. Because the way it works is that, let's say if I'm, I'm here, if I fly over here, the gnome right now, it's full detail because I don't have it on. Let's say if it was on, it would be slightly less detailed. If I fly over here, it'd be slightly less detailed. If I'm all the way over here, and he's like basically not there anymore. Now, if I turn this off, the gnome won't be included in HLODs. So if I fly all the way over here, I won't be able to see him anymore in game unless I fly back. Now you can set it this to off or on depending on if what props you want in your HLOD or not. So if it's a small prop that you won't see from a distance, you can, you can exclude it from the HLOD and it won't be loaded in at the distance. And is space loaded means if I turn this off, I'll be able to see him everywhere. If I turn this on, he'll, he'll disappear if I leave that circle from earlier. Okay, so the build HLDs, we're going to do it right now. Now, building HLDs takes a long time. And also, it uh, it's it's kind of resource intensive on your PC. So just make sure uh, you get, yeah, you know, ready to <laughs> commit. So once you once the build starts, so the HLDs will slowly build over time. And there we go, HLODs are now built. Okay, now if you look at the project size, it says 3%. Uh, I know I said it'll take up a lot, but okay. But there's not really much on this island to have HLDs, so take up that much. But if let's say you're making a really in-depth, highly detailed, like battle royale or open world thing, it's going to get very high if you build HLODs. So just keep that in mind. The clicking size of HLODs will take up the majority of your project size usually. So try to make sure it again, they keep it below project size and download size as much as possible. Now with HLODs built, you basically have the render distance of no wall partition, but it's like, but it's like, you know, <laughs> it's fake. So things in the distance will be built using a lot less resources than if it was without warp partition. So for example, this tree right here, it will have the exact same amount of memory usage as let's say that tree all the way over there. But with HLDs, it scales to the distance how far away you are from it. So closer things will be highest quality and far away things will be the lowest quality possible. This is basically how really big worlds are built using HLDs. Now a few ways to cut down on memory because everybody gets to that point where they reach 100,000 and they kind of they have to get rid of stuff. Some of the best things to do, get rid of unique props and replace them with like already made props if you can. Another good tip is using world partition and making all of your props separated as much as possible. So they'll be kind of hot spots if it makes sense. So over here, there might be like a lot of memory, but then if I fly over here, it's going to be a bit less memory. If I fly over here, there's going to be a lot more memory, but they're not going to interact with each other because they're too far apart. So that's another tip. Another way also is to use instant meshes using foliage mode, which I have a tutorial on if you want to watch it. And another one is using scene graph, which I also have a tutorial on. Now here I am on a website called Ambient CG. And if you're ever getting textures, make sure they're below, they're 2K. If you get anything 8K, that means um yeah, it's a bit expensive and also uh, you can't really use it. Here's my brick material. Now let's say if I wanted to reduce the size of this material, what I could do is I can go into here I can find any texture to go into it. Now inside our texture now, in the LOD bias, you can make it a higher number and it'll, it'll go up to the higher LOD forms. So now as you can see, it's a lot smaller. Or you can do two, three, four. But anyways, this will be the bake of the texture. When you upload it, so as you can see, it's a little, a little bit more. Than that. If I do five, as you can see, it's going to be pretty not textured at all. So zero is like the highest quality since it is the highest fidelity, but it's also not the most expensive on memory. Now, next thing that's kind of useful and also relatively new to UEFN is the spatial 
Profiler. Now, what is that? You're probably wondering. Well, open the tools and you're going to see it right here called Spatial Profiler, right under project size. It's going to open this little window here. Now, as you can see, this is our island. And if I fly around my camera, you're going to see the arrow move around because I'm moving the, the moving the camera. Now, basically, uh, what this can do is show you the different metrics of different kinds of stuff on your island that is uh, important. Now, to actually measure stuff, because it doesn't do it automatically, you need to do it yourself. To actually get samples and measure stuff, you need to first, you need to launch a session. Now, in here, as you can see on a little map, this is orange, like, you know, like arrow. And that's this, that's my player right now. That's who, who's connected into the session right now. And it's tracking where I am and all that. The white arrow is where is the camera in the UEFM viewport. Now, inside of the spatial profiler, there's a, there's a few things you can do. Uh, just saying, if if you do this and you can't click metrics, just close it and then reopen it. That should have to help out. But anyways, first we need to get a sample. And how do we get a sample? We in the session we will we will fly around and we'll record data. We need to create a spatial profile of the area. So the, do that. When you go to metrics, we can track a bunch of different metrics like actor count, game update time, memory usage, and render time. You can only turn on one if you want it to. And as you can see, these options are going to unlock now. Or you can like turn them all on if you want it. So to record something, you need to click this little tiny button up here to begin recording a sample. Click it, and now it's recording. If I zoom in, you're going to see that there's like little squares. Now in the session, you want to just fly around, and you're going to make, as you can see, it, it, it's going to update. Right now, I'm like <laughs> going around, and I'm creating a profile. There's a few options here. If right here, uh, I can turn off toggle the track. Turn that on if you want to track your character flying around, which I was just doing. If you don't want to do that, you can, you can turn it off now. I'll, I'll just fly independently. So once you've got your spatialized profile out, I'm just going to quickly uh, stop this sample. Now we have the sample right here. As you know, we've tracked a bunch of different things like actor count, game update time, memory usage, and render time. And you can swap between them and you can see different, different things. So down here in stats, you can see number of values, above threshold, min, min value, max value, average value, median value. These are a bunch of different uh, stats you can see, but some technical data if you want it. So you got actor count and game play time. Uh, it'll change from, uh, you know, actor counts to uh, time. So it's in milliseconds. So here, for some reason, it was 8.5 seconds. I think that's a fluke. It's an outlier. But usually you want this pretty, pretty low. And 13, 12 milliseconds is, is pretty low for it for, for game update time. You can also hold with left click for values. And the values are these boxes. Those are the boxes. So each box will have its own value. There's 14 values in here because it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Remember, it's only the things you track. So in here, you can see all the different data. So if you want to if you want to optimize things, so if, like if there's an area in your map that's a bit laggy or something, or you don't know if this place, if your game's like bugging out, but you don't know where it's from, try to do this and you can probably find where it is. Now, just a little tip, you want to drag the map, you can hold the middle mouse button, you can drag it around and pressing uh, this button up here will focus the bounds. So as you can see, it'll be in that area. That's the area of bounds. Now, this doesn't save automatically. So this little sample I got, which doesn't save. What you want to do is you want to go up into here. You want to save the sample to a file. Once it's saved, you'll go into like your, your documents. So you just want to save it. Now we have a saved sample. Let's say I have a saved sample now and I I wanted to make a new one, I could then record a new one. Now I'm recording a new one. And so I stop that. Now I have this, but let's say if I want to get my old sample back, you want to click this folder, you go into here, and then you want to click this, and we look at that, we have our old sample back. And let's say if you're colorblind and you, you can't really differentiate, you can go up to here and you can change the colors. You change everything if you wanted to. That's basically all you really need to know about the spatial profiler. Now, last important thing for this video is something called memory calculation. Now, in my session, you're going to notice actually publish your project. You need to first calculate the memory. You're going to notice that when you try to publish your project, it's going to check your island memory and your project size. Now, to calculate your project memory, all you need to do is you need to go up into here, the project, and then you want to launch a memory calculation. Once you launch it, you're going to need to upload it to a private version. So, so this is going to upload to a private version. I'm not going to be publishing this. Who cares? But um. I upload this to a private version. Now, as you can see on the side of the map, it's calculating the memory. You can see the memory calculation going up. It's it's teleporting me all around the island and it's getting every single memory data value that there is. 
And once the memory completion is done, you'll get a result saying, oh wow, you did it, you're under the limit. So if you're over the limit, this will fail. If you're under, it will succeed. And then in the creator portal, if you try to publish a new release, it's gonna check uh, your, your your things and you're gonna see the memory usage is in already. And also download size is also good. Now that is basically everything you need to know about memory. Everything important anyways. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, use my code in, in the Fortnite item shop and watch these videos for more of my tutorial content. I'll see you all around.